start off. Zephaniah chapter 1. We're going to be looking at, if you read Zephaniah, he's kind of like Amos. It's like he's giving a warning back then, and he's giving a warning to us now. And he is telling in these, like what, 18 verses of chapter 1, people God will punish. And if you fit into this line, then you know you're getting a whooping or going to get a whooping from God. I hope this morning you can say, well, hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not in this category that Zephaniah is talking about. And we're going to look real close. This is y'all kids, everybody. People God is going to punish. Now I'm going to look in Zephaniah chapter 1, and we're going to be looking in verse 2. If you'll please stand. Zephaniah 1, 2. All right, hang with me on this reading. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 2. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the Shamarim with the priest, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Micaiah, and them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for Him. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord's at hand, for the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he has bid his guest, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish, are you ready? The princes, the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and, de and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second, and a great crashing from the hills. Howl, ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass. At that time I will search Jerusalem with candles, and punish the men that are settled on their lees. They say in their heart, are you ready for this? The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. And the last verse I want to look at. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man, shall cry there bitterly. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as you spoke those hundreds of years ago, Lord, it applies to us today. Let us take this word, and if someone in here fits in this category, as most of us do at one time or another, let them come to this altar, repent, get confessed up, cleaned up, and ready to serve you. Because, Lord, a soldier not prepared for battle is useless. And I pray this morning, we not only have soldiers, but everybody can leave here saying, I am in God's army. For that's what we need today. Not the U.S. army, but God's army. Because you're coming back for your church. And people don't understand, Jesus, the rapture. You're coming back for your army. People don't get that. You're coming back for your army. For you will bring that army back the second time to help cleanse this earth. So, Lord, I pray today everybody can say, I'm more than a buck private in God's army and that we're moving up the chain of command every day. If not, let them come and take care of it this morning. For I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I like old Zephaniah. He's something you like old Amos. Amen. There's a lot of people, subjects easier to preach. I was actually going to come out of Psalms this morning. Well, last night I was, and about 2 o'clock, if anybody's got back trouble, this weather's doing something crazy because my legs started pounding at 2. I've been up since 2. And just, you know, when my back does, I just walked the floor and I was looking through different texts and getting my mind on, and God, I don't know how I went from uh, Psalms and Proverbs over here to Zephaniah, but it just something caught my attention about people God will punish. And I'm thinking, man, it's, it's here. People, the, just the world showing you that God's going to punish you. Amen? Amen? It's like one old preacher said, I can't put cool whip on the cancer of sin. Amen? <laughs> I like that. I can't cry peace, peace, peace when there is no peace. Amen? And I can't tickle your fancy, as he said, and just make you want to jump up and down saying, oh, I'm all right. It says in Psalms 12, the vilest men are exalted. Man, man are we not just, don't we just lift up Hollywood now? 
Don't we lift up people that's got no morals? Amen? It's all around us. I'll tell you something a few minutes ago. It was shocking. What's around us just in this county that's coming up, and we're sitting back doing nothing about it. Amen? Hmm. As I tell everybody, this church is more than you coming in and sitting down. It's what you do when you go out. This, this is where we get filled up. Amen? And if you don't come to church, you're useless. You're like a car that's sitting by five feet from the gas tank and holes won't reach. Amen? You're useless to God. So coming to church all the time and getting involved is where you get filled up to where you can do something out there useful for God's kingdom. Here's what it says. When the saints are rocked to sleep in the cradle of indifference and all that seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ... Paul said that in Philippians 2.21. You remember old Jonah? Yeah, he was sleeping away in the bottom of the ship, and God took care of him, did he not? Amen. Amen. He was indifferent. He was just going for destruction. And it says, while many are at ease in Zion, as those who would sleep while the building burns down over their heads. Here's an old little short poem I found. And if you listen real closely, it makes a lot of sense. It wrote in 1960, back when Mama and Miss Betty was all young. Amen. Are you ready? Could a mariner sit idle if he heard the drowning cry? Could a doctor sit in comfort knowing that his patients die? Could a fireman watch men perish and not give a helping hand? Can you sit at ease in Zion with the world around you damned? Amen. Can you honestly sit in this church this morning and tell me that you're really honestly interested in the lost in this community? Amen. Amen. You ain't got to prove nothing to me. What have you done this past week to help get people to heaven? Amen. Amen. And don't give me, again, again, the greatest things we want to use around here in our churches for that we can't get right with God is I'm either broke. I'm either physically sick or just don't care. Amen? Amen. Or then you fit into one. Hey, all them three don't matter. I may be all three, but I'm still going to fight for God. That's who God's coming back after. Amen. And we're going to see this morning who God's going to punish. And if you're in that punishment, you're not God of you ain't going to go to heaven. Back in, did you know back in Zephaniah's day, he was a contemporary of Jeremiah. Did you know they was trying to have a revival? As me and a preacher, Brother uh, Alex came over the other day. If you know anything about Brother Alex, me and Robbie was working. I left Robbie out there in the hot. And we sitting here about an hour and a half. And he was, his heart was broken. He just got back from Honduras. And he showed me where 2,000 people were coming to service out of the mountains. I'm talking about hot. They're out under a tent. Can you imagine Honduras? And he said, people were hungry for God. They were coming crying, teenagers. And he said, Brother Jeff, you don't see that here. You don't, see, you don't see it here, amen? You don't see it in this church. Amen. This church, amen? You don't see it. You just don't see people really ready. That's what, that's what revival for is for the Christian. Yes. It's to revive you to go out and do something for somebody that's dead. Amen? amen? Yeah. Lost people are dead. He said he, he was a servant of the Lord, and it was the word of the Lord which came unto him. That's what he said in verse 1. You know, like today, too many, revival was a superficial thing for many people back in that day. And it is today, amen. Yeah. I remember when I was little, if y'all, anybody knows, if you, I would say 50 up, when I was little, revivals was everywhere. They'd go on for two weeks. Yeah. The pastor would come to the community, and he would stay with the, he, the preacher would stay with the pastor of the church that whole week. And that week, those two preachers and their deacons, they would hit every house in that community prior to the week of revival. Amen, Mama? They would visit, they had a list of every member of that church he's preaching. And that revival preacher hit every member. Yeah. And the houses would be filled. You know why? I figured out why it worked that We don't do that today. Why? Because those preachers went in people got feeling guilty. You know? Yeah. Well, I didn't go, I don't come to church half time. I don't go, and, and they would get them in, you know, and, and, and people would kind of get revived, but we don't do that today. Today we come if it's convenient. Now, I'm going to say something I've said once before, and I love my church, but it breaks my heart. Yeah. Last year at Revival, we had a known man come. Y'all remember him? I mean, he attracts hundreds. But every night of our Revival, we had more visitors than members. Yeah. Amen. Look up here. Amen. 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 Does that break your heart? Does that show what you're concerned about? Right. Amen. Yeah. And I know 50 people wasn't sick Monday. Th we just have a three-night Revival and visit more visitors every night than members in this church. Amen. Amen. We're no better than the people Zephaniah is talking to here in that day. We're no better. 630 years before Christ. 2000, 6, 2000, about 647 years, something like that. It was said B.C., 630 B.C. This was said to a bunch of people, and God's saying it to you. Amen. We're looking at a book more up to date than the Mars newspaper. Y'all agree? Now, let's look real close at our text. And God, here's what he's predicted, that he will utterly consume. Look in verse 2. And we're going to break it down very quickly this morning. Look in your Bible. 
His judgment's going to include man, beasts, and the fowls of heaven, the fish of the sea. Now I got to thinking about that. I'm way back in Zephaniah, but I love Revelations. If you're reading Revelations, you'll find that the final vials of wrath, those they're going to pour out, include all nature, because by then, by the end of time, man will have polluted everything on this earth. And God's even going to judge your puppy dog. Amen? Come on now. If I, if I can't get you through that, I'll get you through a dog or an animal or a cat. You hear me? He's going to judge animals. He's going to judge you. Uh, we, we are, you know, we've got to be concerned with the people God has must punished. He, he, he's punishing us all. And it's going, listen, let's look in verse 3. Are you ready? And this is one got me, Brother Mark. In verse 3, it says God's going to uh, punish stumbling blocks. That's the head of the list that shows the contempt of God. God's got against people that make other people stumble. Amen? Amen? Stumbling blocks. Let's see. Uh, did you know stumbling blocks were monuments of idolatry in Israel? That was their, the other religions were stumbling blocks. The devil put before them. In Ezekiel 7, 19, the stumbling block of their iniquity was money, gold, and silver as you see it today. Amen? Amen. People work on Sundays. People work on Sundays. Amen. Yeah. You work six days a week, so tired you can't come to work on Sunday. Amen. Right. The money. Don't, don't say it's money. It's prophecy. We find these riches will not. Here's what it says here. We will not be able to deliver them in the day of wrath of the Lord, just as Zephaniah announces the same truth in Zephaniah 118. What Ezekiel and Zephaniah was saying, your money, gold, and silver will not deliver you, even though in the, in the Egypt's day. Yeah. Did you know even in Egypt's day, the more gold you had when you died, that when you died, you went into the afterlife and you presented it to the death, the doorkeeper, and that would get you into the afterlife. That's why they buried their kings and their, and their, and their pharaohs and everything in golden coffins and great pyramids. Amen. You get what I'm trying to say? They think they could buy heaven. And we do the same thing today. We do the same thing. We just want to call it something else. Money, money, money. God cries, let no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way, Romans 14, 13. So let's money, pleasure, perverted religions, all these are stumbling blocks. Do you agree? Say amen. amen. All right. How many of you cause your own children to stumble by your disinterest in the things of God? Uh -oh. Amen. Come on. Amen. How many of you make your own children, your own grandchildren stumble by your disinterest in God? Well, mom and daddy went to church every now and then. Well, they didn't like something Brother Jeff said, so they jump over here to Sand Ridge. They jump over. We got these little jumpers, recycled church members going all the way around for the puffed up shoulders, and they're the most biggest stumbling blocks in the world. Amen? amen. It's amen or oh me today, God. We're going to get right. We're going to get out. We're going to get left. We're going to go right. Amen? Let's smile. If you're, if you're on fire for God and pushing, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Are you a stumbling block in one way or another? Will your money, your pleasure, or some perverted religion you believe in? Amen? Yeah. They need to be told that it would be better for them to have a millstone hung about your neck and to be drowned in the sea than to cause a little one to stumble. Did you hear me? Some of you parents think you've got your name down in this church. You're going to go to heaven. Think about it real close this morning. You don't come half time. You don't live half time. You got a nasty mouth. Your kids know more about the, the four letter words than the three letter word God. Amen. Oh, Brother Jeff's talking. No, I'm not talking truth. You listen to me this morning. If you're a stumbling block, God's going to get you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And can you imagine being such a stumbling block, you cause your kid to go to hell? Mm -hmm. Huh? Come on. What are most kids getting into today? Right. Amen. Amen. More young men think they was born a girl. More young girls think they was born a boy. Tell me that's not perverted. Amen. And we enhance it. Modern religious movements have all of the, like Scientology, all you got to do is believe and you can move up. Amen. Yeah. We got a church in Henderson County now. I've got a, it just upsets me so much. I've got a cousin I've been trying to get to come to church for years. No names. Find out today or last night she's involved with a, one of our new modernism churches here in Parker's Crossroads. The one that got kicked out of association. They, they renamed their church the Phoenix Church. And on their website to Facebook, on my, if you're friends with them, because I am my cousin, she's going there now. They promote gay marriage. They was at a wedding yesterday and done it right here in Henderson County. They're hooked up with the lesbian, gay, transgender community. And that church believes all this. I mean, that's sad, ain't it? I know the people that go there. 
I know how it started years ago, that pastor that uh, promoted that, letting them join churches and teach Sunday school classes. It ain't nothing wrong. Hey, I ain't no better than them, but what I'm saying is you got to do right or you're going to get left. Amen? I'm here to tell you people's God going to punish. That church, God's going to punish. Yeah. That man that's standing behind that pulpit, or should I say that woman, God's going to punish. Yeah. And now my cousin's hooked up and she said, I love, it's love. All these other churches, she's putting down every church around here because we, she thinks we're damning the homosexuals. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? A murderer, a liar, an adulterer, they're just as bad as that. Y'all going to hell. Isn't that sad? They can't get that. They want to labor. The devil's got them. Well, if you even look at me funny, amen? Uh, I, you're wrong, and I ain't going to your old church, and that's what's going on. Modernism, belief is all this new Scientology, and we get these converts, and they go back and look and say, you know what? I am gay. I'm proud of it. I love God. I know I'm saved, and I'm going to heaven. And then they get mar married to someone else, adopt a child. They raise that child up to be the same way, and that's why the churches are not filled no more as they were 50 years ago when men and women worked 12 hours a day in the field and still made the church on Wednesday night. Amen? My God, all of us live in here within 15, 20 minutes of church. We can't, when we do make it here, we look like we swallowed a prune. Amen? Yep. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's time to get right. Preachers, Sunday school teachers, I have slacked off. We're supposed to have accountability meetings every Sunday first. That started back in June 4th. We're going to have accountability. We're going to stand up. I'm going to ask you, has your Sunday school grown? I'm going to ask you what we're doing in the meetings. I'm going to ask, and you can ask me what I'm doing. Amen? So be prepared. We need answers. Yep. Amen. Amen? Are you a stumbling block? Are you doing your job? In Revelations 2.14, Balaam taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Religious leaders who allow young people to do that. That person in these new churches that allow telling these kids that you can be homosexual, gay, and go to heaven. Oh my God, we need to pray for them. God save us from becoming a stumbling block to these precious lambs that you've entrusted us with. Amen? I would hate to be sitting in a restaurant. Amen? And Joshua and Aaliyah come through and they see me drinking a cup of wine. Oh, it's okay. Jesus did it. Amen? Ain't, ain't that what you hear? Oh, my God, that's a stumbling block. Amen. That'd be like me telling a teenager not to smoke, and I'm puffing three packs a day. Amen. Woo, lay them down, get right. Churches get involved in every kind of recreation and entertainment. And did you know in 1970, that everybody remembers the hippies. Y'all not remember the hippies? You know that movement started in San Francisco. Amen. Because of what? The Vietnam War. These men, back then, women didn't, but these men that didn't want to fight and go kill. I ain't none of my business. But they stayed here and they protested the war. That started in San Francisco, amen? Well, let me tell you, church, the Gillette Memorial Methodist Church of San Francisco started back then. They started having rock and roll shows, Broadway plays in the sanctuary, and then they allowed the National Convention of Prostitutes to meet there. And they call it church. That was in the 70s. Amen? And look where we're at today. Amen? Yep. Be not compromising churches, carnal churches. Leader, remember this. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. God warns, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Yes. Amen? I can't help and I've had people get up and leave because you might have a gay grandmother or a gay sister. I, I, I love them. I love everybody. I'm just telling them, don't get mad at me. Read your Bible and go home and tell them if you don't get right, you're going to hell. Amen. But we won't do that, Brother Jeff. I will hurt their feelings. And they'll look down on me. Hey, I'd rather, you know what? I'd rather know I did right as to be in heaven and they be in hell. Amen. Amen. Are we feeling good this morning? Mm -mm. Stumbling blocks. Am I, st ask yourself this, am I a stumbling block to anyone else by the way I live the Christian life? Yes or no? Let's move on. Again, another person God's going to punish. The false prophets. Oh my God, again, they're everywhere. That's number two. The most surely to be uh, punished are the leaders and devotees of perverted religion. God promises in verse 4, look, to cut off the remnant from Baal from this place in the name of the Sumerians were the priests. And the Sumerians, the, the Sumerians, they were idolatrous priests who had twisted the truth and led people into false worship. Is that not what we're doing today? Scientology, Jehovah's Witness, Catholicism. Come on. 
Oh, no, you said, Brother Jeff, you said that last week. God's put it in my heart to tell you, the Baptist ain't perfect, amen? amen? But the reason I'm a Christian first and a Baptist second is because we're the closest thing to a New Testament church, and if you can prove me wrong, honey child, stay over church and prove it to me, amen? We try to stick closer to the truth than any denominational name tag I know. That's why I'm here today, or I wouldn't, amen? You believe it, receive it, or go on down the road, amen? Maybe if I've hurt your feelings, you might need to go to that Phoenix church over there, Amen? Uh, hey, I'm being, I'm being honest with you. If you can't come here, hey, go find you another one that, that, that'll make you feel good. Amen? Mm-mm-mm. False prophets. Whew. In Galatians 1, Godly plainly stated, There be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Yeah. That was in Galatians 2,000 years ago. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Do you know what that says in Galatians 1? If I preach anything other than what this Bible says, God said, you're damned. Yeah. That's what a curse means. You are damned. You Sunday school teachers, listen to me very closely. What you teaching back there? I know you're teaching the truth. Are you putting your all into it? Or are you just giving a little on Saturday night because you're so tired and you get here Sunday morning and you ain't got a lesson? Amen? Come on. And you wonder why your Sunday school class ain't grown? Woo! Don't look without till you look within. Amen? That's what I have to do. Because you know what? When the, when the church goes down or goes up, it, when the church goes down, it gets blamed on the preacher. When it goes up, he don't get the credit for it. Yeah. I don't want it. I'd like to know this church is growing because of you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Let him be punished. Let him be down. That's what God thinks about Scripture twisting people. Wolves and sheep closing, and Jesus calls them in Matthew. That this would include those who water down the truth, unable to endure sound doctrine, and thus heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Soon they turn away from the truth and are turned unto fables. 2 Timothy 3, 4. You see, that's what happens. You, talk, you start, it's kind of letting a little leaven get in, you know, get in that bread. You know, yeast. You just put, the more you put, it's going to rise, rise, rise. Amen. Just a little. It started way back in the 60s. And look where we're at today. Henderson County has gay and lesbian churches. How does that feel to you? Well, somebody ought to do something about it. Again, quit saying about somebody else what you need to do. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, when can I do it? Try Monday night at 6 o'clock here at the church. If that don't work for you, get a group together and go through the week. The church grows with small groups meeting and going out telling the truth. A preacher will get put down long before you will. What is false doctrine? Are you ready? A teacher asked her pupils one time in school, and I love this one, Miss Susan. A little hand, little boy answered, It's when the doctor gives the wrong stuff to people who are sick and they die. He had it right, didn't he? That's false. I mean, he was so right. That's why Job says they had physicians of no value in Job 13, 4. He was sick. His friends were trying to tell him his faults. And he says, these doctors are no value to me. Amen. Mm -mm. Watered down modernists out of satanic cults devised by the evil one for the express purpose of deceiving souls. Now, the Spirit speaks expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith. Amen. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy 4 1. That's strong language, but in 2 Peter 2 1, God even goes further and calls them damnable heresies. Are you ready? Think about that. And declares that the proponents of sick religions like these bring upon themselves swift destruction. I want to get everybody right. It ain't that I'm perfect, but we got to be right, Brother Mark. So you may be sure God's going to punish these perverted religiousness. Amen? Oh, what was it? Uh, y'all remember the uh, Mormonism? Y'all remember old, uh, Mr. Moon from Korea? Y'all remember that years ago? Oh, yeah, he thought he, he was the unification church. Then the Jehovah's false witnesses, they're going to be dealt with by the Holy God. Amen? All these things. There are some more. Uh, transcendental meditation. They say that's just a warmed over Hinduism. And the cult of Satanism. The Unitarian Church. The Ethical Societies. These were all started back in the 60s. And now they still got some of the same names. But they are just false because they make people feel good about themselves. Amen. Lord, amen. This morning if you wanted to feel good about yourself and really get feel good and get puffed up and smile, watch a Joel Osteen sermon. But if you want to come here and hear the truth, here it is. Right here in the Bible. People God will punish. Are you in this? I, want, I hope everybody can come this morning and say, well, I was, but not now. I'm ready to put on my armor. I'm ready for Christ to come and get his army. You're useless. Van was in the army back there. 
I, you know what people, you know what, you know, I know enough about my daddy was in Korea when you're, when you're in the boot camp. You was too. You're, when you're in boot camp, you have one guy mess up. He ain't what he needs to be. Y'all all pay for it, don't you, brother? And next thing you know, he gets one of them pillar beatings, amen? And uh, you, put your, you put your soap in your pillow. He, he gets right, amen? amen? Boy, ain't you glad that the deacons and the preachers don't put soap bars in a pillowcase come around whooping on you? I don't have to do it. God's doing it to you. If you ain't going to, he's going to get you. You can be punished on this earth. We're going to see that very quickly. Amen? Amen. There shall be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divinations, or if you're an observer of times, if you're an enchanter, or a witch, a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do such things are an abomination unto the Lord. So when you're sitting there, looking there, and doing them, uh, doing, you're looking and seeing what uh, sign you are, woo wee. God's going to judge you. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love to look at the moon and the stars, but I ain't going to get up there thinking, oh, I wonder which planet them aliens are on and all that. Amen. What I want to look at is the morning star, the bright morning star. His name's Jesus. That's why it says, seek ye things which are above. Y'all, it's time to quit showing up every now and then. It's time to be in part-time church members in this church. If you can't come full-time here and give God your best, please find a church that suits you, that's preaching the Word of God, and get in it. Otherwise, I doubt that you're saved to begin with. You're searching for something. You're never no closer to God. You're always having some type of trouble. That the devil is using you. Amen. He's whooping you around like a red-headed stepchild. God said, I will punish. Look in verse 5. Woo, this is a big one, Brother Dennis. It got me real bad on this one. Nature worshipers. All right. Them that worship the host of heaven, Zephaniah mentions in verse 5 of her text. Now, all right, let's write down. That's the nature boy on the creek bank on Sunday morning, popping his bud light. Well, we'll say bush. I never did drink them old light beer. I don't know why fat people drink light beer. Amen. I've never figured that out. Amen. But uh, God for fat men, let me say, I had an uncle with beer belly and drinking light beer. <laughs> it just don't make no sense to me. But besides that, it's a nature boy on the creek bank. Amen. Are you ready? He's on the creek bank right now fishing because I know right now my brothers told me the crappies and stuff are biting real good. In May, the brim bed. And they're popping that beer top. And, and if you was to go try to talk to them, they say, I can worship Jesus and everything right here on this creek bank. Amen? Amen? I can worship God just as well out fishing as you in that church, preacher. He has an admiration for God's creation. Amen? Really? Oh, I love to be out. Oh, some of my best sermons I've told you have come sitting under a tree or in my blind deer hunting, taking my Bible with me. If I don't see nothing, I have just a good time, really, in God's nature. But it ain't on Sunday. You hear me? It ain't on Sunday. That's God's day, and you better remember that. Nature worshipers. And then here's the one that gets me that say, I'm going to give God the man upstairs. He ain't the man upstairs. He's God. Amen. He was a man when he walked earth. He's God now. Here's a lover of sports who has no time for the Savior. What about them, the sports guy? What's, what in the fall has Sunday turned to? Come on, what do we worship more in the fall on Sunday? It's called the NFL. Amen. Come on, y'all. Don't tell me you got no fo football people in here. I'm still glad they play college on Saturday. Amen. Lord God, don't put that on Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hey, we got people that worship sports more than the Savior. Here is a, here's another. Or the hunter that uses God's soil and water. All these things for his pleasure while ignoring the God who made all them things for his pleasure. Amen? Amen? They ignore God. Of course, worshiping the host of heaven. Look at this real closely and bring it down. Where it says, worshiping the host of heaven upon the housetops. That, they studied that and they believe that's people that refer to stargazers and astrologers. And we have a lot of them. Amen? That's what they broke it down to. Why your life study stars? Why do we worry what's on Mars? Amen? Yeah. Amen? Didn't it say men are from Mars and women from Pluto? Ain't there a book that sold millions for that nonsense? Amen. Yeah. Men and women are from the dirt. And the dirt you'll go back to if you don't get raptured. Amen. Amen. What they need most to discover is heaven's host. Amen. Here, look in verse 5. I've got to hurry up and close this out. You know somebody else they're going to get, Brother Mark? Look in verse 5. The hypocrites. Oh, my God. Them that worship and swear by the Lord and that swear by Malachim. Note, 
These people in Zephaniah's day swore by both. America's full of this. Look real close. God, good Lord and good devil. That's what we say. Amen. We say good Lord and good devil. We love all things and everybody, Brother Jeff. Think real close. Everything is, you know what song? Everything is beautiful in its own way. Amen. All right. For the hypocrite is a play actor. Right? Brother Mark taught on that not long ago. God thundered. Are you ready? Listen, real close because April, when we take the Lord's Supper again, I can't remember our business meetings. Here's what God thundered. And I'm scared for somebody in this church maybe. I don't know. Listen, here's what God says about hypocrite. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table, table and the table of devils. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Paul said that that church that was going crazy, that new church, well, he's having big sex parties and everything else. Amen? Yeah, and he told him, y'all can't do that. And when he come to communion, they were making a big party out of it. And Paul said, and you say, well, we don't do that. If you sit here and take the Lord's Supper and you confess your sins before you do it, you're clean, get ready to take it. But if you go out and you're still doing that same sin, you have drunk done damnation to yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, read on down in verse 28. Let a man so examine himself this morning. It's it's time to take an examination. Amen? Amen. And I want to tell you something. Listen to me very close. Quit worrying about losing your hair. Quit worrying about being too skinny, ugly, overweight. Quit worrying about all that. You're made in God's image. How many of you look more like Jesus today than he did yesterday? Let's move on. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Very close. I, I can stay on there. What communion hath light with darkness? What, what path he that believeth with an infidel? Paul said in 2 Corinthians, so what does a saved person have any business doing anything with darkness? What do you mean? Well, that would mean you'd leave this church and go over to the other church. Amen? Amen? That's a dark church. Amen? You're not to partake of that. Amen? Amen. You say, y'all young saved Christians, you're not to date somebody lost. Right. You ain't got no communion with that. If you do that, you might end up marrying it. And let me tell you, I bring hell. Ask my wife. She married a lost man. I put her through pure hell. And that lady right there, too, because I was lost. Preacher should have never married me and her. I wouldn't even ask. Again, the sign of the times. God says this very closely. I'm going to move on. I've got a lot to say. Jesus climaxes his sermon there in Matthew when he talked about hypocrites. You remember the ones that make long prayers? Amen. You remember them? He, he says, uh, he said, you can strain in a gnat and you swallow a camel. You wash the outside of the cup and platter, but leaves the inside filthy. That's what he told the Pharisees. And here's what he said. Are y'all ready? If you think I've said anything that offends you, here's what Jesus says about a hypocrite. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? He called you a snake, a viper. What do you do when you see a snake and a viper? I kill it. I know it's against, it's against the law, but you know what? I ain't got no use for a snake. I ain't got no use for wasps, but I ain't got no use for snakes. These would be, I want to tell you, how many remember the, assassin, uh, the attempted assassination of Governor George Wallace? Y'all remember that? Yeah. All, right, all right, here, listen to this. This is what I found. The man that shot him and put him in a wheelchair, all before he did it was cheering and waving a Wallace flag in a crowd of Wallace supporters just before he pulled the trigger and almost sent that Alabama conservative to his grave. Yeah. 